Today I'm making a little bit different of a video. I'm actually going to review a sleeping bag that I've been using recently. This sleeping bag I got about a year ago and so I have a year worth of camping stories with this sleeping bag. I want to share a little bit about what I like about it, what I don't like about it so much, and what tips I would offer to somebody looking for their next sleeping bag. The sleeping bag that I have is a hike and bike brand, Shivano 32 degree. This is a down sleeping bag with a 650 fill power. It is a mummy style, so when zipped up it has the mummy shape. I have the regular length. I am 5'9", and this is a great length for me. Usually I like to go for the long version of things because I am a little bit taller, but uh, this sleeping bag, honestly, I think is great. You can tell it is plenty tall for me. If you're going camping in 32 degrees, you wouldn't get a 32 degree sleeping bag. The comfortability of this sleeping bag is at its peak at about 60 degree temperatures for sleeping. Uh, the limit of comfortability, the lower limit, is considered to be 45 degrees and the survival rating is 32 degrees. In a little bit I'll talk more about my experience temperature-wise with this sleeping bag. When packed up, this sleeping bag is 6.5 inches by 10 inches. It did come with a stuff sack, which I think is great. It's 2.13 pounds. So first of all, I'm going to talk about what I love about this sleeping bag and then I'm going to talk about the not-so-ideal things about this sleeping bag. What I love is that this sleeping bag packs down really small. When I pack it up, it packs down nice and small because it is a down sleeping bag. Down sleeping bags tend to pack up pretty small compared to synthetic sleeping bags. Another thing I really like about this sleeping bag is inside of the hood of the mummy, there is a drawstring so that you can kind of cinch it around you and let less of the cold air into your sleeping bag when it is a little bit more chilly and you can open it up as well all of these little additions and things like that do add extra weight so you want to make sure that when you do buy a sleeping bag you look at all the features of it and make sure that you like those features i like that the regular length of the sleeping bag worked for me and i didn't have to get the long it's just nice to have space to lay out completely i've gotten regular length sleeping bags before that I was too tall for. They often have the height measurements uh, for who would fit best in the sleeping bag online. So definitely look at that before purchasing. The zipper doesn't snag. I can unzip it and zip it up and unzip it and zip it up and it doesn't snag at all. I've never had that issue. There's not like the little flaps here. This piece that protects the sleeping bag from the zipper on this sleeping bag is very thick and durable. That might add a little bit of weight, but again, this feature is super worth it because when I'm zipping, I never zip that little flap into the zipper because it's a thicker material and I love it. Another thing I really like about it is it is super easy to pack up, especially compared to synthetic sleeping bags. Down just squishes in super easily to a stuff sack. It doesn't take me much time at all when I'm cleaning up just to stuff the sleeping bag in here. Some of the struggles of the sleeping bag or things that I have found to be not my favorite aspects. Uh, one of them is actually, I'm gonna talk about this one first because it just happened. <laughs> what just happened was I finally had to clean my sleeping bag. Uh, I hadn't cleaned my sleeping bag since I first got it aside from just wiping it down with a rag. It was time to really wash it. So I hand washed it to try and preserve the life of the sleeping bag a little bit more than putting it through a washing machine. And when I had to dry it, washing it was fine, but when I went to dry my sleeping bag, it took like a full week to dry. Down uh, just takes a long time to dry. If you use a dryer, it'll probably still take you a few hours and a few cycles to dry it. But I let it dry outside and I tried to avoid putting it in the sun for the most part. Sun is just hard on a lot of materials. You grab the sleeping bag, it looks fully dry, but when you squeeze the parts where the down is, it'll actually release more moisture from the down. So you really have to make sure it's super duper 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 dry before you pack it up so that the feathers don't get moldy and musty and ruin your bag. Another thing with down sleeping bags is typically down when down gets wet, um, it's not as warm or it's not warm at all actually. Synthetic sleeping bags when they get wet they're gonna give you some warmth anyways. This sleeping bag has 
water resistant down it repels water so i haven't had a lot of issues with this sleeping bag but i know that if this bag got soaked through while i was camping if i had a really bad issue with water getting into my tent i wouldn't be warm at all so i have to think about that when i'm going camping uh speaking of staying warm i use this sleeping bag to go camping in the spring uh, when the temperatures at night were maybe 45 or 50 degrees at night and that's about the lower limit of comfortability for the sleeping bag and i will say i was not comfortable i do sleep cool i usually need blankets to stay warm at night but if you are a really warm sleeper then it might be just fine for you i am kind of disappointed in the use of this sleeping bag for me because i really can only use it when it's hot out and still pretty warm at night um, but that's a personal thing. There's nothing wrong with the sleeping bag. It just is something to think about and something that I have been sad about since getting the sleeping bag. And you might have to just learn for yourself what works best for you. But if you are a cool sleeper, you tend to be cold when you sleep, definitely keep that in mind when you're buying your sleeping bag. But overall, I do still really like this sleeping bag. I love how small it packs. It's super light. Compared to other sleeping bags I've had, this is like a half or a third of the size. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about not specifically this sleeping bag, but things that you should think about when you're buying your own sleeping bag. One thing is fill power. So this sleeping bag here is a 650 fill power. The higher the fill power, the better when it comes to down sleeping bags. This sleeping bag is rated at 32 degrees and it's 650 fill power. If you had a, another sleeping bag that was also rated to 32 degrees, but was like an 800 fill power, it would actually be a smaller bag. 800 fill power is more compressible, the down compresses smaller, but it still gives the same warmth. So the higher the fill power, basically the smaller and lighter your pack will be. Another thing to think about with your sleeping bag, back to accessories, is what kind of accessories do you want? Do you want a pocket for your pillow in your sleeping bag? Some sleeping bags have a little slot that you can slide your pillow into so it doesn't move around when you're sleeping. I don't really sleep with a pillow so I don't care about that but that's a really nice accessory to people who sleep with pillows and want that I guess. <laughs> there are different sleeping bags that have pockets in them so that you can put things like earplugs or like an eye cover for you to sleep better at night or your phone if you want to put that in your sleeping bag. This one does have a pocket. I don't really use it, but I don't mind it either. When buying a sleeping bag, think about what season you'll be camping in. If you are a spring and fall camper, cause summer's just too hot for you to get out camping, then you might want a warmer sleeping bag. If you are going to be car camping, you might be able to get away with a larger, more bulky sleeping bag. If you're going to be backpacking, you probably want something pretty small. The smaller sleeping bags that you get for backpacking are probably still going to be some of the larger items in your pack. It's worth taking the time to really look around and check out a bunch of sleeping bags. Also, I would recommend buying them in person if possible. It's nice to go and feel it and see it. The pictures online sometimes make the sleeping bag look a lot more fluffy and large than what they actually pack down to be. Lightweight and small pack size are very important, especially if you're backpacking but it's not more important than your enjoyment of the outdoors. You're going out camping probably just because you want to enjoy yourself. So I recommend taking your comfort into account more than trying to get the absolute smallest, most lightweight sleeping bag as possible. I am going to try and share my insights on some of the gear that I use. So just give you ideas of what to think about when buying your gear. If there's a specific gear item that you've seen me use that you'd want me to talk about and say why I like it or if I would even buy that item again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to all of the different gear items that are suggested. I've had a lot of new subscribers recently and I really do appreciate it. I appreciate every single subscribe. It does mean a lot to me.